Today on Rift Spirits and Gear, we do an old-fashioned distortion pedal shootout with Uncle Ben Eller. Hey, kids. So Uncle Ben Eller and I are here at the lovely Sweetwater Studios. It's so lovely here. It's so lovely, and Sweetwater has let us run rampant and, and have the run of the place. We are wild boys. Yeah, we're we wild are wild. Boys. We're getting wild. Making and noise. what we're going to do today is we are going to shoot out some distortion pedals, some that you've heard of, some that you may not have heard of. Mm -hmm. And we thought we would keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. And we are going to set all of this up as follows. We have a lovely Gibson Les Paul. Ooh. We have one, two, three, four, five, six distortion pedals going into the front of the low side of a JCM uh, 800 amplifier. Why are we doing it like this? Because the 800 is a pretty classic pedal platform. Yeah. It's very, very clean on the low side. This makes it so that the distortion pedals can shine. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think it's important to note that we have a wide variety of distortion pedals here to suit your gigging needs. There's some stuff that's like, let's say a little bit more extreme that's going to be good yep. for the brutes. Mm -hmm. So like the EVH and the Rev stuff, of course, a metal zone on yep. here. Some of the other ones on here, like the JHS AT Plus and the Wampler Gearbox, those are a little bit more suited for getting great rock and roll tones. Right. So there's no like one size fits all here. It's all about like what is working well for the gig that you're doing. Correct. I think it's worth noting too that like you and I are are really amp distortion guys. Uh, yes. Traditionally speaking, I never ever reach for a pedal to get my any of my gain tones. I will boost with an mm -hmm. overdrive pedal, but an actual sure. distortion pedal. Not for me. Not usually your game. Not. Mm -mm. I'm typically the same way, especially for anything super heavy. I like to get the dirt from the amp itself. Uh, but I do find myself playing a wide variety of cover gigs where I just need to bring a little clean combo. I'll need dirt for solos sure. and stuff like that. And I know a lot of our viewers out there just have a clean amp and they're looking for a good, you know, high gain distortion sound to get from a box. So sure. this is for you guys. It's for you. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started. Ben, would you give us our bass non-pedal tone? This is my clean tone. Isn't that what you say in pedal videos? This is my clean tone. This is my clean tone. This is your clean tone. Well, this is your clean tone. That's not my clean tone. My clean tone is one of these on. Okay, I've lost it, but here's how it sounds. It's like the morning after a rainstorm. That's very, very nice. It's lovely, really. Let's, uh, let's mess it up and get dirty with it. Okay. Where do you want to start? Do you want to, uh, so that was on the middle position. We're going to primarily, I think we're going to be living in. Let's the, rock on that bridge pickup. Yeah, okay. Sit with that back hamburger. Okay, so first, all of these are going to be at noon to start. Yeah. We're going to start with the MXR EVH 5150 Overdrive. Overdrive. Which is funny because Eddie Van Halen called anything game related Overdrive. <laughs> and MXR was like, but it's a distortion pedal. And he went, it's Overdrive. And they went, Okay. Are you okay. going to argue with Eddie? That's a true story. And they know you do not argue no, with Eddie. That's not. And they just went, okay, fine. We'll call it an overdrive. That's, that's a factual story. Uh, here's how it sounds. Got a lot of that high end bite that that's I aggressive. Realized. Yeah, out of the fifty one fifty series of amps. Yeah, it's nice. That it's got that built in noise gate too. The noise gate is fantastic. Oh. I will turn this down. Turning it on, like that. Very very nice. But man. it's a very very nice gate. So let's go ahead and let's let's dial in some ideal tones. I'm gonna leave the output where it's at. Yeah. I'm going to take some of the, the treble out. I was going to say, that high end is a little bit biting. You know, a clean JCM can be a little bit bright, too. Ag agree. Uh, I'm also going to turn the gain down a little bit. I think so. Yeah. It's pretty intense. Yeah, okay. That sounds a lot better I like than that. high end, really tamed like that. And you took quite a lot out of there, actually. I took a ton out. Yeah. 
That's so, pretty good. I could use that. I could. That's that's a very very usable tone. You want to see what it sounds like with the boost? Yeah, let's try that out right, too. Cool. I like that. The lower gain, but with the boost hitting it. Sauce. You're the sauce boss. Ooh, I'm a sauce boss, baby. That Dude, sounds good, man. That's awesome. I'm not mad at that at all. No, um, and I will say, for for the record, this is traditionally one of my absolute favorite distortion pedals okay. when I have used one. Yeah. Just because this, especially used as a preamp, is just awesome. Oh, really? It's very, very it awesome. Way. So you yeah. could run it into like, the power section mm -hmm. or something? Ooh. Yeah, but our buddy uh, Ken Susie yeah. toured in Unearth using the setup into the loop of a basement. No. Sounded crazy good. Old Saucy Susie himself. Yeah, sounded crazy good. Okay, wow. so we should move on to the Freeman B-E-O-D. Can you give me our clean tone one more time? Of course, of course. Bright. It's very bright. Very, very bright. Again, I think the uh, bass tone this, here is kind of doing that to us a little bit. We have the top end rolled off on the 800, but being in the low input, it's gonna be it's gonna be very bright. Yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn down this treble. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea to start. Very aggressive. Very aggressive, yeah. Uh, I will also note that there's no mid-range control on the BEOD. Oh. Um, instead, you have just a tight control to kind of call the, the low end. Yeah. You have bass and uh, treble and presence. Okay. This is pretty pretty nice. It's like a little bit hairier, a little less smooth yeah. than the EVH. Right. Um, I think it sounds pretty dang good, It's though, pretty honestly. good. I would like a, uh, a mid-range control. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Sometimes I notice when you're messing with that tightness control, sometimes the load it's, got like a little flubby and then it got too lean sound. Too much. For me anyway. Yeah, agree. Hmm, but still sounds pretty dang good. Pretty good. Okay, so let's move on to the Rev G3. Can we get you our clean tone one more time, sir? That's very aggressive. Very aggressive. I accidentally switched on the aggression, one of the aggression modes, which oh, okay. we, will, we will get to in just a second. Yeah, because you can get very different sounds out of that pedal. You, you can get the crazy over the top switch. chuns with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this has a, a full EQ. This has a bass, middle, and treble. Aggression settings, volume, and gain. Let's go ahead and fine tune this. I already actually have the treble turned down a little bit. Okay, yeah. And it's still a little bit bright for me, personally. It's a little bit bright. We're yeah. gonna turn that down. We're also gonna turn down the mid-range, and we're gonna mess with the aggression settings, and I'm probably gonna turn down the gain, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Because I find, especially with these, sometimes running the gain lower, but the aggression switch yes. on kind of gives you a better feel, like better compression Agreed. under your hands and stuff. And also, too, like, you've used the G4, right? Yes. I find the G3 is, like, a little stiffer. I Agreed. like it better for, like, really mean rhythm stuff. Yeah. The G4, the red one, is a little bit smoother, and I like it better for leads, personally. I know, I I know a lot of guys that run a clean amp, and they'll use, like, the G2, G3, and G4 on their board for, like, basically a three-channel kind of setup, yep. which is pretty sick, too. So, yeah, let's kind of mess with this yep. guy a little bit here and see what we can do with it. Thank you. 
I'm, I, I'm noticing those pots have a lot of throw to them. Like when you rolled the top end up and down, drastically different. Tone. Wild difference. Uh, this thing is still so gained out. You got the gain like I off? Have, the gain is almost <laughs> off. What? <laughs> And this no. is not, these are not hot pickups. Oh, these are super low output, like yeah. PAF. Pickups. Very vintage. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't realize it had that much on tap. <laughs> That's what's the game seriously off. That's crazy. Sounds good. I like it. It does, yeah. But that's a lot of game. It's a lot of game, man. But, you know, especially too, I know a lot of guys really like that stiff, like that, that kind of dryness. <laughs> Like, especially if you have a really heavy right hand, right. like that John Brown right hand. Yeah, yeah. That can get the most out of that. That's gonna be really great sound and tone. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to <laughs> An old standby. A legend. <laughs> a legend. If you're our age, this was your first pedal, period, right? Yeah. Weirdly yeah. enough, I just got my first metal zone like last year. First one ever, but I used my brothers. I actually used to gig when I was a kid with a, uh, what was the one before this? The hyper metal? Oh, the hyper metal, yeah. Or the heavy metal. It was the heavy metal pedal. The heavy metal. The <laughs> one that took the weird adapter, that was the one that I had. Wow. This is wild. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go, give us a clean tone. Yeah, and this is an interesting one because the metal zone was like, it's what we used, then it became a joke, then it, it kind of became like the meme of guitar pedals. And this is supposed to replicate a crazy modded boosted out 800. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Let's see what it does. Bass tone, please. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> the bees, the bees. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's that's so uh, right, man. That's too much. It hurts. Like, I couldn't keep going. It that's just, too much. It okay, I'm going to, we're going to turn. We're gonna turn that top end all the way down. I mean, fortunately, the sweep on the knobs on a metal zone it's is nuts. Crazy. Like you could seriously get a billion different tones out of this thing using those mid knobs. Okay, and, and let's figure out the mid range too. So I'm gonna mess with this. Okay, all right. That's already a million times better. Yeah, I turned down the top end. Pretty dang usable, actually. Yeah. You know. About as good as I can get. It's about as good as you can get, and it's not—it's not bad. It's not my tone. Like that's not my tone either. If you're playing by yourself and you love the sound of that huge bottom end and that scooped mid-range kind of thing, it's probably a good choice for you. Sure. It's not my choice, <laughs> but it's not my choice either. It might be your choice. It might be your choice, and there's nothing wrong with that. Your pedal, your choice. That's right. Your pedal, your choice. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What is this pedal called again? So this is the JHS AT Plus, the AT Plus Plus pedal, and this is one that I have used on my board for many, many, many. Gigs. I've never seen this pedal before. It is a really, really great, very natural amp-like distortion. That's the thing that I really like about this pedal. It's one of those that, if you are blindfolded, you might not know that you're playing through a pedal and not an amp. And you know, of course. There's no such thing as the best tone in the world, but right. Andy Timmons does have it. Okay. So he should know how to design a pretty sick pedal. From what I understand, this is made to replicate one of his absolute favorite, um, you know, old Marshalls that he has on this side. And this side is a replica of like his favorite uh, little green pedal, we'll leave it at that, that you can engage for a boost. So you have amp distortion and a boost in one pedal. And a uh, little mini switch up here is switchable from like imitating a 25 watt to 50 watt to 100 watt. I can't remember which one is which. I want to say the 100 is the middle. JHS, please label all of your your features on your pedals. I need that in my life because I can't remember. Okay, I want to say let's give it a spin. I know this one is the amp side, so clean tone first. Yeah, we'll start there. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's all at noon. That's awesome. It's already pretty dang good, right? It sounds a lot like I'm playing through a dirty JCM 800. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. That sounds really nice. This is the first one that we've played where the top end wasn't immediately like ear piercing through our okay. setup. Here's what we should do. I'm going to dial this in and then we will get into the boost and play with that. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Way that it just has that thwack. There's a a throw to it, man. That feels I, like a yeah. Hand. There's that's like this, real it's, nice. It's like this bloom thing that happens. A bloom, a bloom. That's that's the word. Yeah, it's that's nice. So very amp like to me. I really like this pedal a lot. Okay, let's uh let's check out the boost. Yeah, sure. <laughs> my big toe shoot up in my boot that's good and the cool thing about it is too is you can really use it as like you know rhythm tone turn the boost on for solos just to get a little bit extra yeah. on there and um this one is really comfy to play leads on like a lot of these have been really comfy for rhythm sure but like some of them like with the stiffness it's not really fun to play right leads right with. right this guy to me is comfy for both so okay i like that guy a lot personally it might not get brutal if you're going for like I need absolute chugga chugga heaviness. I mean, you could stack pedals if you really wanted to get brutal with this. Exactly. Yeah, you could yeah, probably yeah. make it happen with that. Treat this as if it was an amp and yes. boost the amp. Yes, yes. Um, okay. I like that guy a lot. This is my current favorite. Me too. Out of this lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So our last one here to check out is the Wampler Gearbox, which was designed in conjunction with my, my good buddy and musical brother, Andy Wood. Who? Andy Wood, that singular tree, not forest. Whoa! <laughs> and um, they designed this pedal based on a couple of pre-existing Wampler pedals that they kind of dialed in and tweaked and, and sweetened up. Combined them, yeah. So similar to the AT, this one has a main distortion plus a boost, and you can use those separately and independently. We forgot to mention that with AT. You can use just the boost on its own. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you can do it with this, too. Uh, there's a lot of features about this pedal. You did a video on it. On I did channel, do a video right? on it, yes. So watch that if you want to learn everything that there Link is to know about Link down below in the description. It. I'll tell you, for me, um, if you guys watch my Yacht Rock gig video I did a couple months ago, you'll know that this is what is currently on my cover band board. I really like this pedal a lot. You're out there using it. I'm out there using it. Yeah, like, this is the one that's currently on my board. Um, very okay. flexible. It's got some cool features like a built-in gate and stuff. And again, kind of like the JHS, it just feels very amp like to me okay let's mash on it let's mash on it does you that clean tone <laughs> Probably the least amount of gain of any of them we've used so far. I like that top end. Uh, I like that top end sizzliness, the greenness, detail. but yeah. it's real tight. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and again, it's not brutal or anything. Right no. now, the gain is the gain on noon. Yeah, so I mean, you got more. You can go up on the gain. Let's see what that sounds yep. like. Like, that sounds like an old JMP wound that's nice. up. You that's know? real nice. It's very amp-like to me. I agree. Perfect for like those ACDC style tones as you're hearing. Yeah. You know? You still got to hit hard to get a lot of dirt out of it. Less aggressive than the JHS. It is. But it still will get you anything up to hard 70s rock yeah. territory. Yeah, totally, man. Yeah, you can totally do your classic rock 
totally. show on that all yeah, day, yeah. especially when you start adding in that boost too. Okay. So let's see what that guy sounds like right. on there. This is very mix ready. Like yeah. this is this will sit in a band situation. The low end is nice and tight. I was it's not too gonna boomy. say there's not tons of low end on this thing. Yeah. So like right now it's kind of mid rangey after we engage the boost. Yeah. The thing about this pedal that that Andy showed me actually is that a lot of people are kind of scared to mess with is you can actually take quite a lot of those mids out, and it's still very mid rangey. It just kind of shifts where the focus of the mids Let's is. Let's check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Big rock. Big rock tones. That's great. I could forget I was using a pedal with that. That's pretty good, man. It's pretty nice, man. And again, listen to listen to Andy's playing, listen to Andy's you know records and stuff. You're gonna hear that in action. There's a lot of different tones you can get out of it. He can get that perfect like Eric Johnson violin tone out of it. Obviously, we're going for more rock tones right now. Sure. Uh, but you can get all kinds of sounds out of that guy. Okay. Really cool pedal. So if you had to choose one of these, which would you choose? The one, honestly, with the setup that we're using right now with this Paul yep. and that JCM. Yep. That AT is really getting good to me, dude. Agree. It sounds just so amp-like to me. Like Agreed. I could I could forget I'm using a pedal. Uh depending on what I was doing, yeah. I would choose the JHS or the EVH. Yeah. I was gonna say, like the JHS for me, if I'm doing anything from yeah, you know, clean cover gig to classic rock kind of yeah. territory, even some shreddier stuff. But if I need heaviness, brutality. That 5150 to me is pretty dang hard to beat. I mean, you could honestly use both of these and train wreck this in to yeah. have this little cleaner. You could do that. You could do that. So those are probably the ones that are standing out the most to me right now. Agree. Of course, your mileage may vary. And of course, there's one little variable we've not we've not thrown in, in yet, which is this little guy right here. I just happened to bring this from my private collection. These aren't even on the market anymore, but uh, well, I think you know about this guy, right? I, I I'm a child of the 90s. We were actually issued these oh, yeah. in 1995. This is the Digitech grunge pedal. The DOD grunge pedal, then Digitech grunge pedal. FX69B. And then uh, I think the controls originally were loud, butt face, and grunge. <laughs> butt face and grunge. Butt face. That is and, our childhood. And in parents a complained. <laughs> Crazy. Let's hook this up. See how it stacks up. And let's see how this stacks up. We're going to get rid of the metal zone. All right. The gain is off. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> the gain is off. <laughs> For those ultra high gain grunge tones that we all knew from the Seattle scene, of course. Yeah. Well, I think that one sucks. I think this one sucks too. <laughs> so probably not that one. Yeah, probably not that one. Yeah. Probably just take that one and leave it on the shelf at home. Yeah. You okay. got to play your gig. Yeah, yeah. It's a good place for it. Yeah, it's a good place for it. Your shelf, the collector's piece. Yeah. And with that, let us know in the comments which distortion pedal is your favorite. Do not say the grunge. It's not your favorite. Say the grunge. It's not the grunge. Big shout out to Sweetwater Studios for uh, letting us have the run of the place. And uh, if you have any more uh, questions or like any more info on any of these pedals or other pedals, I will link down below in the description to sweetwater.com. And with that, we're going to get out of here. See ya. Bye.